let's get activated with our rosemary oil just to open the mind. Aromatherapy is amazing uh, to help open the mind and help calm. So especially for me and then I have here my citrine which is good for speaking and courage and one of my favorites citrine. So make sure you check out the blog. So welcome everyone, welcome to Hell Notes for Beauty. It's Jessica here, your host, your creator. If you're new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe and if you are a long time follower and you appreciate this new content that I'm providing you today, make sure that you also like and share as well. So what are we going to be talking about today at Hell Notes for Beauty? So I'm not gonna start off by saying that we're gonna start a book club. Because I'm not. I'm going to share with you some of my favorite books and some of the books that I started for um, using for spiritual purposes, for health purposes, holistic medicine and so forth. And just give you a little tidbit into my, my curiosities and realm of things that I like to look into. So books is one of my favorite things. I love books because there's just so much information and there's so much things of activating that you can access in a book as far as your curiosities and also your imagination. So bringing your imagination forward is something that's very beautiful because it comes from you, it comes from within. We live in an age where a lot of things are dictated for us. We have grown up with so many different beliefs and we really haven't had the opportunity, especially if you come to a certain age, to find our own curiosities and find out about the things that we like for our own, for our own personal selves and not because it was forced or dictated upon us or influenced upon us. So for me, that's what book has always been, so sort of an outlet and a way of activating my imagination and also tapping into my curiosities from back in ancient, ancient times to the here and now. So with that being said, I'm going to share with you, as I mentioned, some of my favorite books. A lot of the books that I like to read are mostly reference-based books. And I like storybooks and I like, you know, science fiction and I like books of that nature. But I'm more of a researcher. I always wanted to be like an anthropologist. And so I'm, I like journals. I like um, studies. I like articles. And I like reference books because they can be quick reads. It's not something that you feel like you have to sit there and read chapter for chapter. Um, for me, it's more like, oh, okay, well, maybe I can flip through this. Sort of like an encyclopedia. There are some books that, you know, talks about different things and cultures and things of that nature and that's what really interests me but for the most part I stick with types of books that you can reference so for example like a dictionary type book like this one is the dictionary the woman's dictionary of symbols and sacred objects for me um, again it's more of a book that I don't have to sit down and read and feel forced that I have to read every chapter every, t every time that I may have um, a question about something or curiosity about something or need to question a dream that I had or things of synchronicities that I want to tie into, I would go into, for example, this book, The Woman's Encyclopedia of Symbols and Sacred Objects, to see, you know, what is the historical information that I can start with to continue further building upon and researching on. So, for example, if I have a dream, look what came up, Angel. If I have a dream of an angel, I will come here and see, you know, what are some of the information about angels and its symbolism so that way I can decipher it for myself and as well as a lot of things. So I like the idea of being able to um, look at books and as a way as a reference book. I remember growing up as a kid, I would be very intrigued. Um, when the salesman would come to our home to try to sell us these collections of encyclopedias. And, you know, I'd be, that, that for me was kind of like the first Google ever, that you'd be able to go through the encyclopedia and find out about any information that you were researching for school or if you had a curiosity about. So that's where I feel that a lot of my interest for these types of books and my way of reading and interacting with books and information comes from, just 
having that ability to have that flexibility with the books that I like. Um, so with that being said, let's get into each book individually, how I use it and what I use it for as well. First book that I highly recommend for any reader who is looking into understanding their dreams or understanding some of the synchronicities that that you may experience on a day-to-day -day basis, this book is really good for that. And even if you don't, you know, if you're just curious about symbols um, or if you're into um, creativity and things of that nature, there are some things here that can can inspire you and give you that historical background and historical information on on certain things. For me, it can be anything, you know, for example, a vase, you know, a veil, Juno planets. So it, it's a variety of things that this book goes into and, and definitely aligns with the type of books that I like to read and reference. So I like to also just read, like, if I go in here, so you see it has all the symbols of the books, of of whatever it is, mouth, and it has just historical information. What I also like about books when I do read them as well is to, to read the index. The index is very important to help you see what the book is overall, but also the bibliography. The bibliography in every book is you know, where you get where you get to understand where the author of the book got their information from. So I think when you're reading as well, you not only want to learn about the author's background, but also you want to look into the bibliography because that can be also a way for you to look into more books or more studies or journals or articles that pertain to whatever the book or subject is that you're reading about. So I always um, advise people when they are reading into books to read about the author. So Barbara G. Walker has a lot of background in historical information and feminism as well. But in, in the overall aspect, you want to also see what they have looked into as far as resources and information. So when you are reading a book, you know, look into it, look into the person that has written the book as well. The next book, which is almost in the same, not a reference book, but more um, uh, like in a storyline, and not necessarily a storyline, but just having information on historical aspect of the goddess mother and the matriarchy throughout the world and throughout cultures and traditions um, and everything about the woman in ancient culture and how that has changed throughout um, the history and throughout patriarchy and its current effect on, on our culture and in society as well. This book is not necessarily um, a reference book like the other books that i would be showing you of symbols, but it's one of the most interesting books that I've been able to read because it gives a lot of historical context on a lot of the ancient goddesses that we know and don't know from all types of backgrounds and cultures as well. So it gives you a lot of stories about the great mother throughout history and the power of the feminine energy as far as healing and its symbolisms and of cause and effects throughout the culture. Especially now, I think it's important for us to understand the aspect of, of the earth, which is, um, especially in this movement now of the Me Too movement, as well as people becoming more conscious of who they are and becoming more in tune with healing aspects which originates from the mother and how a lot of the things that we have suffered or dealt with as a humanity, as a whole, as a collective, and also how it has affected us on an individual basis all comes from the effects of patriarchy as well as forgetting about the origins of our natural um, matriarchy as well, which is a mother and the feminine energy and how we can have that balance. I think now with things coming to the surface with um, the Me Too movement, 
and the women's march and women becoming more vocal and more understanding of their role in society that we've lost that balance as well on the masculine aspect so having that balance and understanding of who we were on a feminine level and how also that masculine aspect worked with us was very um, important for me to understand about the great cosmic mother and and really gave me a perspective and understanding that the male and the masculine really is not their nature. It's just something that they've been conditioned to up to this day. And we should help them heal them and bring them back to their natural state. And from that masculine aspect, which not only they will enrich themselves, but also we will be able to enrich ourselves and learn from that aspect of ourselves as well. Because we are both... Um, having issues with understanding our masculine side as well as the masculine trying to understand their feminine side as well. So I think becoming educated on that front is very important and this book really brings that into perspective and gives that education of where we're at right now, where we've been and where we possibly can lead to if we don't take the measures to heal ourselves as a whole. The next book that is my favorite, and these are really hefty books, so of course, like I mentioned, if you, you, it's not really a book that you can sit down and read page for page, not necessarily, it's in that nature, but this book is more in line with the women's um, dictionary symbols and sacred objects, but this one is more about stories, myths, secrets, and like superstitions, as you would say. This was, um, this is really a really uh, nice book to have and I definitely recommend it for anyone who is interested in mysticism, um, the occult, esoteric, exoteric rituals, whatever the case may be, I find that this book is really universal on that front as well because it gives you all info historical information on deities, on goddesses, on the uh, ideas, um, just religions, and it gives you a lot of information also about symbols too as well, but more about the historical information on things like days of the week, um, tools like honey, um, evergreens, animals, so a lot of things that are of interest to you such as symbolisms, um, animals, Whatever the case may be, this book really goes into it. It goes into the historical uh, persecution of the Jews. It goes into the Pope. It goes into Judas. It goes into Kalima. What kingship is throughout culture and history. Labyrinth. So, as I was mentioning, I can go over Ma'at, Lucifer. It talks about marriage as well. It talks about Mary, a lot of things. So it goes into that reference dictionary format where if you're interested in something or, for example, in my case, if I have a dream about something and let's say it's of a horse, I will go into this book and also to the uh, dictionary, the sim dictionary of the women's symbols and try to decipher what my dreams are trying to tell me based on the historical information on the symbolism. So again, these are very interesting ways to be able to research and see what symbols and experiences mean to you. Because you can explain your dream to someone, but for example, a bell can mean something completely different to me as it what may mean to you based on your experience, what you researched, what you learned about it. So I think it's very important when you are going through your spiritual journey to take the time to research and find information for yourself. And that way you can make proper discernments when you do come across other information. It's also very important to, when you do come across information, not to to have it in a sense to use it to argue about something or to make a point about something. I think it's very important that if you do have information is to enrich yourself. And in the way you enrich yourself, people around you will gravitate toward that and want to, to emulate that, to be able to be like that, to be inspired to, you know, have that sort of knowledge and way of being. So I think it's very important to, when you are going into your own spiritual journey, to ask questions for yourself and find things out for yourself. This book also has an extensive um, bibliography as well 
that and credits of photos and acknowledgements as well. So again, as I mentioned, always make sure that you do check out the bibliography of books that you are reading so that we can get a better understanding of where the information come from, comes from and as well as the historical backing and research that comes from that information as well. And last but not least, again, my favorite, favorite format, encyclopedia reference more formats. And if it has encyclopedia in the title, I am more than likely need to gravitate toward it and that is definitely the case with this book this is the encyclopedia of spirits the ultimate guide to magic of fairies genies demons ghosts gods and goddesses and this is by Judica Iles and this book definitely is a must if there's any of the books that I've recommended that you must get I would definitely recommend this book and I love this book because with with the nature of what I do and some of the beliefs that I have, one of the main questions that I get from people is, do I believe in God? And it's such an interesting question because my answer almost always in my head or, or instantly, instinctively is, well, what God? You know, well, what God do we believe in? What God do you think I believe in? And what God do you believe in? So with this book, that question holds so much water because there's so many gods and goddesses and entities and thoughts and uh, saints and so forth that it's just really hard to say when we say, you know, I believe in God, what God are you believing in necessarily? Because is it an imposed God? Is it the God that we've been told that we have to follow? Like, which is the God that you have connected with so closely? that you the that question comes about you know do you believe in god because to me from my understanding with god is such a broad question because if i were really to give you a definitive answer i would say that my mom is god she's the first person that i've ever seen in my life um, i was born from her and any any issue or anything that I've had in my life that I've needed of anything the blessing of my mom has always been there for me so if I were to give an answer or give a tangible um, you know description of what God really means to me I would most more than likely say that that's the first God I ever knew but but do I believe in God that there's a higher power and a creator yes I, I do um, but I don't think that I believe it in, in the way that most people do. For me, what God means is that God is me. You know, I am the reflection of God and God lives within me. And every day I work towards elevating that, work towards um, getting to that level, but never um, did I ever think that God was outside of me. Well, I can't say never, but I think as I've gotten older, I've come to understand that there is no higher power outside of me that is running the show. Um, I think that God is within me, that God lives within my temple, and that I'm able to express, in the things that I do every day and how I express myself, I'm able to convey and share that energy of who and what God is. So again, it's a very loaded question, but this book always, always brings me to that question. You know, what is God? There's so many gods that we have created for ourselves, that we have created for others, that has been forcefully imposed onto others. So it's a really interesting um, uh, way of looking at things. And this book really goes, I mean, this book is almost over a thousand pages long of all the types of known gods and beliefs and entities and energies and archetypes that cultures have believed in forever for millennia um even to this day we have entities created by people look at the slender man look at you know things like mickey mouse or or anything these are entities that are created and and in a sense people idolize people look up to them even celebrities as well so when when you ask you know 
what is God or do you believe in God? To me, it's just like, okay, but what, which God, what God? Did the one that you created, the one that was imposed on you, the one that you experienced, the one that you made? So it's just a lot, of, it's a loaded question and a good question. I never get offended by that question at all. If anything, that question, when it does arise and it comes about, it helps me um, question what what it, where does my belief at that current moment in time so I look at it as an opportunity to reevaluate myself to evaluate reevaluate my beliefs to reevaluate you know if if my mind is currently in an open mind so I don't like to judge or say that you know one God is better than the other or that one energy is better than the other or that your belief is one. I always look to this book and if there's an entity, an energy, an archetype that interests me, I always go to this book to help me tap into that portal of that energy of that entity or that God or goddess or whatever it may be. So I think it's very important when getting into spirituality and learning about religion that you can keep yourself, you know, in a narrow mindset. Now, if that's something that you're comfortable in, that's something that resonates with you, then why not? You know, who am I or anyone to say that, you know, your way of believing is wrong? It's not. It's your way of believing and how you're able to cope and, and deal with life and deal with the changes and, and the things that are around you. For me, it's just a constant self-development and understanding that I am God that God is within me and every action that I make towards the world and myself is a, is completely a reflection of my God is God status. Um, my ability to tap into that higher power that's out there. So I never leave my development or my spirituality or my beliefs up to anyone. I leave it up to my experience and the things that I have experienced that helps me believe and have faith in it more because of my experience. But on the same token, it doesn't mean that I'm closed-minded or shut down any sort of information or people because of what they believe in or what I perceive that they think I believe. I just look at myself as that portal to be able to access and help people find the information when they need when it's their time so with that being said that are those are the four books that i highly recommend um, for any beginner and pretty much giving you an insight into the types of books that i like to read and also my style of learning and finding information and researching as well so i hope you got something out of this i'm going to link down below the titles of the books as well as where you can purchase them most more than likely on amazon these i did purchase on amazon for many years ago so it may not be the same exact vendors but overall once you get the title you'll be able to find it at the vendor that fits best for you so again thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed today's video make sure that you do hit the thumbs up and if you're not subscribed don't forget to subscribe so that way you can come in come on back and tune in to more information about beauty spirituality holistic health and all that other good stuff so thank you for joining for watching goodbye